Hello, and welcome to Yoga Traveler Tips for Beginners. Seven essential tools that we can we need to have in our home yoga space. I know a lot of people are, are moving their practice online, well, in their home and following people online. I would love you to follow me. Head to www.yogatraveler.online. You'll find lots of great programs, including a beginner yoga program where I explain these props in detail and give you some hints that you can use to start a very viable and practical home yoga practice. So step one, get a yoga mat here as my yoga mat that I have for my home space. Now I just do yoga in my home space on carpet. That's the floor I have right now. Maybe someday I'd love to change that, but it's what I've got. This hugger mugger mat works great. Manduka is also one of my favorite brands. They're a little bit more expensive, but totally worth it. I got my Manduka bat black mat pro when I did my yoga teacher training nine years ago, and I use it three times a day and it's it's still great. It's still perfect. It's like it's brand new still. So I love it. A yoga mat's essential. Um, if you're really strapped for cash, you can get pretty cheap ones um, just at Amazon, but they might wear through a little bit easier. So you just de depend on what you want to pay your money for, right? You could even try a towel. The important thing is that your hands don't slide when you are in a pose like Automaka Swanasana or Downward Facing Dog. You want to have some good grip under you. And there's different thicknesses thicknesses as well. I don't have to worry about the thickness because I have carpet underneath me. But if you're doing it on a flat uh, surface, you might want a thicker mat, quarter of an inch or so. So you could check that out. There's That is essential. When I started practicing yoga, I didn't practice in my home. I went to a gym where they had some nighttime yoga classes, but I was convinced that I was not going to love yoga. I was going to hate it. And so I didn't buy a mat. And for weeks I did yoga on the floor without a mat. I don't know, I was younger then, I was dumb. <laughs> but I learned, first of all, I learned that I loved yoga and that I needed to invest in some good tools. <laughs> all right, number two essential thing is a yoga block. I like to have two of these because sometimes we do poses where we would put both of them on the floor and our hands on both blocks and you can change the height of your block. Now say again, you're just getting started in your home yoga practice and you don't have funds or whatever for a block. What could you use? You could use a stack of books. I would suggest hardback books maybe two or three, just place them on the floor, hand goes on those blocks. It brings the ground closer to, I mean, on the books. It brings the ground closer to you as you're starting to build up some flexibility. So yoga blocks or a book or two are essential. Number three, a strap. So this can easily be replaced with a towel or a long sock like your husband's dress socks, although he may not want you using it for yoga. But straps are great when we're trying to do poses, perhaps behind our back, say my hands can't reach. So I use the strap and I can still feel the integration of my shoulder and tricep. This is my shoulder. This is my tricep. <laughs> you could also place your strap around your feet if you're doing forward folding kinds of poses. So if you can't reach my toes, I can use the strap. Very essential and easily replaced with a towel if you don't want to buy one yourself. Number four would be a blanket. I also really love bolsters, but these do tend to be a little bit more pricey. So a blanket can serve in its place. We can use a blanket if we have knee issues. Place the blanket on the ground, knees go on the blanket when you are doing um, all fours, hands and knees, or deep lunging yoga poses. You can place them underneath your hips, elevation of hips for ease in laying on the floor. You could 
use them, say you are an expecting mother and you've got a baby there, you can turn on your side in Shavasana and lay against the blanket. You can also use it for warmth and just place the blanket across your body when you want to be um, feeling warm and comfortable during Shavasana. So blanket, easy. I have a Mexican blanket, that's the kind I like, but any blanket will do. It's totally good. The other thing, so what are we on? One, two, three, four, we're on five. A blank wall. Now, why would I need a blank wall? I find that a blank wall is very helpful, especially for inversion practice. Say you want to bring your practice to the next level, you're starting to work on getting on your hands upside down. Bringing your legs up against the wall can help you to feel a little more secure as you're learning and building up some strength. You can also use the wall for restorative purposes. Place this blanket under your hips, your hips up against the wall, swing your legs up onto the wall and relax. Enjoy that reversal of blood flow and, and feel your body relax on the wall. Walls are great. It's great to sit your back up against the wall, stretch your legs forward, especially if you're working on hamstring stretching and you can't quite sit at a 90 degree angle. Well, that wall is going to make you sit at a 90 degree angle. So get that structure as well. That's a, an important thing. Number six, you need an internet capable device. That's it. People say, what kind of technology do I need to have to do online yoga? Nothing, a phone. You can have a, your laptop, you can have a tablet, anything that connects to the internet. You can log on to your favorite yoga teacher, may I suggest yoga traveler, and, and enjoy a practice with them. So internet capable device, simple, doesn't need a lot of fancy, fancy tools. And step number seven, or last tip, whatever you wanna say, number seven, give yourself at least 15 to 20 minutes every day if you could. I say every day because I'm a yoga teacher. Of course, building into a longer practice will give you more strength and more flexibility over time. But sometimes that's not practical when we're starting out. So don't feel bad if you say, well, I only have 15 minutes to do yoga. Great, roll out your mat, do yoga for 15 minutes. One, you'll keep your body constantly warm and stretching. If you're doing it every day, you'll start to see gains specifically in your flexibility. Two, you'll learn that yoga can be, can take its shape in many different forms. We can do a long strengthening stretching class. We can do a quick session where we calm our breath, calm our, our, our anxiety, and just take a moment for ourselves. And Three, you'll be building a consistent practice. If you tell yourself that it's okay to do yoga 15 to 20 minutes every day and that you're not going to beat yourself up if you can't do an hour and a half every day, then you will be more consistent with your goals of building yoga into your life consistently as a consistent practice. So that's it. That's my seven essential tools for a good, healthy home yoga practice. It's pretty easy to get started when you just know which path to take, right? You know where your steps are to go. So check me out at www.yogatraveler.online. I've got many great programs for you on the website. It's one specifically for beginners. It walks you through the props that you need. It brought, walks you through modifications of yoga poses and to learn how to build yoga into your everyday life. Do it safely from a qualified yoga instructor. So I hope to see you soon on the mat. Thanks for joining.